Hey, Pretty Girl Club. Welcome to another episode of Exotical Cuffing Season, baby. So this is going to be a part three of the previous videos I made about why MLS people can't date each other. Have you ever noticed how mixed or light-skinned people are not allowed to date one another? In every black movie you've ever seen, the MLS woman is always paired with a darker-skinned, unambiguous man. And I think that this brainwashes a lot of unambiguous black men when they get older to think that they are somehow entitled to us MLS women or to automatically assume that we like prefer them or that we prefer to date them. I've seen this trope of kind of the lighter skinned woman with the darker skinned man in multiple quote unquote black love movies. I think about movies like Love and Basketball, Malcolm and Marie, and that Beyonce movie, Obsessed. It's as if black people have been trained not to like or to not want to date their own phenotype. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Most people want to date us or create us. The average unambiguous black man wants to date an MLS woman or he wants to create one of us by mixing with a non-black woman. And the same goes for the average black woman. Usually uh, the average black woman would date a mixed race or a lighter skinned man if she could or she would create one via divesting. Because we all know that unambiguous black men and unambiguous black women, generally speaking, don't seem to really like each other or they seem to kind of have this gender war thing going on. But has anyone ever noticed how when two mixed people date each other, people will say that we look like siblings? This actually happened with me and my boyfriend recently. One of my friends was like, this is your boyfriend? Are you guys related? I've noticed that a lot of people in the black community, they don't want us to date each other because it makes them feel left out. They feel like if all the biracials date each other, then they're stuck with their unambiguous counterparts. They feel like if all the light skins only get with each other or if all the MGMs or mixed race people only get with each other, it makes them feel left out and not chosen. Um, it makes them feel like they are stuck with their unambiguous counterparts, which they seem to not want. By the way, I'm not saying this to be shady. I'm literally saying this because black women themselves have said that their own counterparts don't want them. And black men, particularly in the red pill space, have stated that they basically don't like black women either. A lot of them are like passport bros or they think black women are masculine or whatever. So that leaves us MLS people the ones who are pushed in and out of the black community. We are often the standard of beauty in the black community because a lot of unambiguous men see us as close enough to blackness to be relatable, but still far away enough from blackness to be exotic. Or, you know, sometimes men try to latch on to our quote unquote privileges. To be honest, I kind of feel like this was the dynamic between Tia Mori's marriage to Corey Hardrick. I feel like him, like his vibe and his cultural background comes off as being more monocultural African-American, whereas Tia Mori, she's very multiracial, very multicultural. She definitely doesn't come off like she's a girl who's from quote unquote the hood. She definitely has a fluid identity. And I feel like a lot of uh, monocultural black men see that in us MLS women and they they view our fluid identity as access to privilege, which it is. And so a lot of men, they want to latch on to us. How many of you MLS women have had guys beg you to be their baby mama? That's happened to me a lot. I've had lots of guys where they really want to have kids with me. They really want to hurry up and marry me. They kind of want to like lock me down or whatever because they feel like due to my background and my looks or my intelligence or whatever, they want me to pass it on to their children. They want their legacy to be tied to an MLS woman. And I've noticed this uh, kind of like selective mating, I guess you could call it. I've noticed this selective mating in the African-American community in particular where a lot of people unfortunately seem to want to wash out their blackness or they want to, you know, they just want to latch on to the closest MLS person they can find. And so when they see two MLS people getting together, they seem to get mad because they're like, hey, that's not fair. You're keeping all those good genes to yourself. You're keeping all of those good looks within your family. That's not fair. Two good looking people can't both get together. That's not fair. Only one, only one person in the relationship gets to be attractive or handsome. And actually, I've even seen some women play into this as well, where they'll be like, oh, I don't want to be with a light skinned man because I want to be the pretty one. He's going to be more feminine than me. Um, but I've noticed that a lot of 
unambiguous mono people will get mad out of jealousy. So they feel like the MLS man or woman belongs to them. That's their fantasy. So how dare you take away my fantasy from me? This this happened with the whole Tia Mori thing. Tia Mori was supposed to be the wholesome girl. She's supposed to be the girl that, you know, is the classy one that other people are supposed to aspire to be like. People hold Tia Mori to different standards than they hold Cardi B to. And that's because of Tia Mori's fluid identity. That's because of the way that she carries herself. So when Tia Mori ups and leaves and divorces her monocultural black guy who she first you know, started dating. He was a lighter skinned black guy. When she first started dating him, he literally had no car and she was essentially hypogamous. So this, this fits a lot of dusty guys fantasy. Basically they want kind of this hypogamous, very classy MLS woman to be their dream girl. And so when they see someone like Tia Mori saying, Hey, actually I can do better than you just as a single, as a single mom. When, when you see a woman like Tia Mori choose to be a single mother, over choosing to be with you, you know, that can be very insulting to men who kind of view her as the fantasy. And I've noticed the same energy with a person like Lori Harvey. They feel like, you know, how dare you be single and enjoy yourself? How dare you be pretty and use your looks to your advantage? So I've noticed that um, in the monocultural African American community, people don't like when you look good and you know you look good and then you refuse to be with someone who doesn't look good or when you use your looks to your advantage like a Britney Renner or something like that. I've noticed a lot of people don't like that. And then people will try to hide behind talking points like colorism, texturism, featureism, racism, anti-blackness, or pretty privilege, or lack thereof. They'll try to hide behind all of those talking points so that you feel obligated to date them. But the thing is, I don't have to date someone in order to prove that I'm not racist. I don't owe anybody a romantic relationship. So for all the people who get mad at Tia Mori for getting a divorce, she doesn't owe anybody a lifetime of an unhappy marriage. And this is the problem with men who view women as property. They think that, no, once you marry me, you're stuck with me and that's it. And it's like, well, no, if you break the marriage vows, aka you're emotionally unavailable, all you do is come home, play video games, watch porn and go to bed, and then I'm out here building my career and you're just kind of resting and you're, you're, you're living the soft life based off of my work ethic, then actually, no, I don't, I don't owe somebody 80 years of unhappiness just so I can prove to society or prove to ra random strangers on the internet that I'm somehow this wholesome, good woman. And I think that's what Tia Mori realized. Um, I'm definitely going to make multiple follow-up videos to this because I think it's a very interesting thing. But what do you guys think? Why do you think a lot of MLS people don't date each other? Why do you think we've been socialized not to date each other? Why do you think that in a lot of those black love movies, they tend to show an unambiguous monoracial darker skinned black man with an MLS woman. Why do you think that is? Why don't they ever show like two MLS people together, kind of like Steph Curry and Aisha Curry? Why don't, why don't they show that? Oh, and one thing I forgot to add is I feel like a lot of people, they expect MLS men and women to do charity dating, meaning, you know, like I'm the attractive one or whatever. So in order to prove that I'm not shallow, I should now date someone quote unquote ugly, or I should date someone that I'm not attracted to in order to prove that I'm not colorist or racist. And that's idiotic to me. You don't owe anyone your body. You don't owe anyone a romantic relationship and you don't owe anyone a false marriage. Anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty, ladies.